bother. A year ago we all thought we were flying high, heading into the roaring 20s, and now we're just wondering whether the tier system will reach that high. That's right, it's 2020 part two, y'all. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever is appropriate for the time of day you're watching. Welcome to the final Room 101 of 2020. <laughs> Now, before we get going down Reminiscence Alley, if you missed part one of the calamity of 2020, the link is somewhere on the screen. I don't know whereabouts it'll hit because at this point, I'm not very good at this. So if it's on there, kudos to me. August had us thinking that the worst was behind us, that the future was bright, the future was orange. Or at least Trump did. Spoiler alert, it wasn't. So what did the end of 2020 have in store for us? Well, let's take a look. Get those masks strapped on properly because here, we go. Right, so you know the rules, don't you? Let's go over them one more time. Masks in corridors, but not in classrooms, because COVID doesn't want to learn, am I right? Novak Djokovic was today sensationally disqualified from the US Open for hitting a line judge oh, no. with a ball. That does make a bit more sense. OMG guys, everyone's favourite hun, David Attenborough, has just broken the record set by Jennifer Aniston hashtag on a break by gaining one million followers faster than anybody else ever. OMG, I can't wait to see pictures of his team. So today's headline on October the 4th is that the total amount of COVID cases in the UK has reached the half a million mark. Let's hear from Johnny Conspo on his thoughts. Yeah, but it's less than 1% of the country who officially got it, so why can't I go round the mates? Today we are introducing our three-tier plan. It'll definitely only ever be three tiers. Definitely. Obviously. Probably. Don't know. Happy Halloween, everyone. Today, we reached the 1 million confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the UK. If you tuned in just 27 days earlier, you'll have seen that we hit the half a million mark on October the 4th. So what accounts for the rapid rise in infections? Let's hear from Johnny Conspo. Yeah, but people would have died anyway. I've had it four times now. Nobody's taking me seriously. It's the hoax. How can you go from having 500,000 cases in the first six months of it and then another 500,000 cases in the next four weeks? It's the computers. The computers are making it up. Get your mink coats, get your mink coats. Only a small chance they've got COVID on it, freshly imported from Denmark. Denmark, very exotic, everybody. And Fox News, yeah. Donald Trump has won this election because he's enabled a very, very, very secretive clause where basically he's enacted opposites day. So all the votes that counted for Joseph Biden have gone by then and now they belong to the Donald. Well done, Donald. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Here's for five years. Make America great again. Hi. Finally, after years of development, we've made a Sony PS5. Order on the 19th of November, so that you don't miss out. Well, we didn't say we made more than one. Right, Sandra, get on the phone. I've just seen the press conference. We're allowed to have three bubbles mixing for five days over the Christmas spirit because Boris thinks COVID's got the Christmas spirit and won't infect anyone over the Christmas holiday. Oh yeah! I can confirm that lockdown will end on December 2nd, so we can try all this tier system. I've made it foolproof, which means even I can understand it. <laughs> Some breaking news heading our way. We've just heard that the Pfizer vaccine has been approved and is ready for rollout immediately. This comes as quite the tonic as we're about to exit another lockdown. But someone thinks it might be too good to be true. Let's hear from our good friend, Anthony Vaxer. Well, you got to ask yourself, what are they putting in there? The COVID-19 vaccine. Well, what else? Have you got any proof they're putting trackers in there? No. Exactly. You don't know. They could be putting all sorts in there. They just want to follow us about, don't they? They think my life's more interesting. They got to know everything. Hi, I'm Dr. Dick, and I can confirm that Margaret Keenan has successfully had the first dose of her COVID-19 vaccination. 
I'd also like to categorically say that she has not encountered any fertility issues as a result. We did not think we'd have to state this with her being 80 years old, but the vaccine does not at this point show that you suffer fertility issues as a result of the vaccination as purported by several anti-vaxxers. Oh, bollocks, 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 what do you mean there's another strain? Oh, peace off, Cummings, get me another Barnard Castle wanker on the double. It's going to be a press conference, apparently there's some minor alterations to the bubble implants for Christmas. Can't be anything mega, though, because like, it's two days away, three days away, isn't it? So. Right, so uh, Christmas is cancelled, folks. I tried to save it, but I can't. Don't get travelling, don't get mixing. Oh, and tier three, you might become tier four on Boxing Day. Yeah, bye, 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 bye. More bollocks to that. I'm still having Christmas. I know I haven't got COVID. And if the schools can stay open, the government's basically saying that they can have 30 people in one room, no problem. So what's the difference with me? So on the last day of 2020, let's see some global statistics. In the UK, we've seen nearly two and a half million cases with over 72,000 deaths. Worldwide, there have been 82 million cases with nearly 2 million deaths. Staggering. In lighter news, a Russian man has had a coin removed from his nose after it being lodged up there for over 50 years. How it got there, nobody knows. What a year. Now look, let's be honest, 2020 hasn't been as awful as we all try to make out that it has been. Yes, COVID has been the dominating issue of 2020, but that aside, we've actually seen some huge sporting achievements, some great acts of generosity and togetherness that none of us knew before. People have actually spoken to their neighbours, for example, potentially for the first time ever. We've seen people actually for once taking stock of the fact that the NHS means something to them. We've seen that people have had time to look at what they actually want from life, perhaps even a career change. This has been good for a number of people. I absolutely understand that for some it's been the worst thing possible. There are people who live on their own, for example, who've had to deal with the idea of not seeing people for months on end, and I understand that. But what I don't want us to start thinking is that 2020 has been bad for everyone, because it's just not the truth. The people who made Zoom, for example, have had a pretty good year. It's also probably the closest that you will ever get to being a teenager again. Being able to lie in bed till 10 o'clock in the morning, get up, watch Netflix, play video games and then roll back straight into bed if you haven't already left it. And trust me, just by looking at him, it's possible that Boris Johnson has had the worst year out of all of us. So there is some solace in that. Absolutely though, 2020 has not been the year that we wanted it to be and for that reason alone, it's going in my bin. Here's to 2021 and with that, my final thoughts. I'd like to issue a word of caution. I'm seeing a lot of posts today about how 2021 will be the year for them and about how all of their dreams will be made true through hard work and things getting better. Now, whilst that might seem in essence a real positive two fingers up to COVID, that actually for me sets yourself up for a bit of a fail. For at least the next few months, COVID is going to be a thing. As we enter 2021, some of us are in the harshest restrictions that we've been in all year. It doesn't look like it's going away anytime soon. And so for people to start thinking that 2021 as of tomorrow will be amazing is a little bit naive for me. At this time of year, we see people coming out with their resolutions, what they'd like to achieve this year, perhaps a change they'd like to see in themselves. Now I'm not setting any actual goal-based achievements this year, Basically, I just want to become more considered and less reactive to what I'm seeing in front of me. One of the worst things that's happened this year is to see how quick to anger people are with regards to seeing half a headline on social media or even reading someone else's Facebook status. With regards to our social problems this year, people have been angry a lot. That's not to say that the issues that they've been angry about aren't worthwhile issues, but what we've seen is that people have to shout louder each time. And with a child, if a child just keeps shouting louder and louder and louder, do we ever listen to them? Not really. And it's the same kind of case with this. We've seen all sorts of social issues that have come out this year. If we just step back, look at what it is, and try and find a way to solve the problem, rather than getting angry about it, which so many people are, we find that we might actually have a vehicle for change, rather than just getting people to stir up more social hatred and discomfort with each other. History will see this year as the year that COVID took from us. I hope that we all remember that this was a year where we had time to play those games, to watch those films, to get in shape, to eat all the food, to Zoom with everybody we'd ever met before, to run out of things to say, 
to find that you actually might now know what you want from life, rather than it be that a virus dictated the whole year. Of course, it will always be remembered for that, but I really hope that the rest of the year's progress isn't forgotten. And hey, I even had time to make this YouTube channel that thousands of people watch. <laughs> For me as well, looking at it from a bigger perspective, the reason that this year sucks so much is because we all have the same problem. Years on years on years have gone by where everybody might argue that one particular year was worse for them than it was for anybody else. But the truth is we've all been affected by it. And there's a little bit of that that's actually quite nice because at least now we have a shared goal. Even if there are some absolute arseholes that keep breaking all the rules and extending all these lockdowns further than we need to, by and large, the general public has bought into the fact that if you don't want someone to die, don't break the rules. And actually, it's quite nice that we aren't looking at that. All we're looking at is the upheaval and difficulty that we've had this year. But we live in a world that is dictated by you must succeed and you must be able to show other people that you do so. When it comes to setting those goals for this year, yeah, absolutely set them. But be realistic and also don't be crippled by them because if we've learned anything from this year, is that the unexpected can derail your plans at any time. Having said all that, I really hope 2021 is better for all of us. Look after yourself. Don't be a dick. Don't listen to the people online who make out you've got to have a plan for every single second of your life because you just don't. And hopefully we can look back at this year as one that gave us some time and perspective. There'll be people who don't want to be grateful for it. There'll be people who say 2020 has been awful. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, fine. There's no changing your opinion, but there's also no need to make out that everybody has had the same year. In the new year, there will be a completely new series of Room 1 Gone, amongst various other little videos I'm going to put together between here and then, so I am not going anywhere. <laughs> so I'll see you all in 2021. Until then, it's choose ciao and goodbye. Uh, that, that deal we made, um, does Monopoly money actually work in the UK? Happy New Year to everyone except me!